How's it going? It's been nearly a month now since the last update in the backyard so I'm just going to do a bit of a quick one on the main garden just to show you how that one's going down the back there. We've got a couple of seed starts going on here. I've got a whole heap of seeds from other people so I'll just run through them quickly. Richard's given me some seeds. I just noticed the Turkish striped monastery I think they're called have just popped. They're all, they're all tomatoes. Also some chocolate Cherokee, some black truffle um, Japanese I think they're called some yellow bell and also the tie-dye berkeley they've all popped so i'm really impressed with that so for all seeds richard they're still doing rather well got some rocket from dave um some eggplant from charles uh star moon watermelon from peter and he's also given us these west indian west indian gherkins and we've got some mexican mouse gherkins as well from norell so thank you very much guys really appreciate all this seed sharing that's going on Oh, and also, songbird, K, mum, um, there's your pineapples, none have popped yet, so we'll just wait and see. Uh, if I didn't include that, I'd get in trouble, I know. Over here, we've just got some store-bought potatoes that are going to see, just these larger ones. They're getting, they're, I think they're a little bit too big to put in the ground, they tend to rot if they're too big. So I actually went out and bought some little Sebago seed potatoes, so these guys here hopefully will be going in the no-dig garden out the front. Uh, I've sort of revamped it a bit over the last couple of weeks, so yeah, I think these guys will do really well out the front. As for these other ones, I'm probably going to make up some little barrels. I'll try a little no-dig style barrel and see if they work in there. Down the back, we have a kira and some chooks. Uh, what have we got? Over here, the bathtub. The bathtub's been moved out to get ready for the water chestnuts. And the water chestnuts are doing fairly well. We've actually had some of the corms divide. So it looks like we're going to have a great bumper crop of water chestnuts if I can get them in. A um, bit of an update on the aquaponics. So I posted a clip last week about the rats. We had some rats getting up in here and just going through the strawberries. We caught four of them and I'm pretty sure that's pretty much all it for this wave. I do know that, you know, there will be more rats and there may be some more hanging around, but I haven't found the aquaponics as of yet. So every night I'm coming out and setting the trap uh, traps. I'm not leaving them set during the day because I don't want any pigeons to come down and go the mulberries and end up losing their head. Down the back here, the daikon radish, Andrew, veggie patch in Perth. I accidentally broke this flower head off, I've already told you. Um, so I've lost all the seeds that were forming on that uh, flower head. The radish itself was about 40 centimetres long and weighed about 800 grams. So it was a fair whack. I think yours will probably end up being a little bit bigger. But luckily enough, I have a whole heap of seed setting, the daikon radish and a whole heap of ladybugs eating the aphids. So that's good. Over here, I took out the galangal and I'm getting ready to take the rest of this bed out. The soil that's being moved from where the fish farm's going, just those white IBCs up there, I need to level that out. All the soil that comes out from there will be used to fill this in here, um, all the plastics coming out. And what I intend to do is move this wall here over to there and level it all out so I can move all these aquaponic beds around. So while I'm losing one wicking bed here, I've started all those ones out the front. So we really haven't lost much space at all. Just down in here, I have a mustard greens cover crop to just to get rid of some nematodes. Put some more straw in the chook coop and they've covered up all their green feeder. There are still some greens in there, but yeah, we'll just move the straw from the top and they should be all right. The reason we add the straw is the chickens um, foul, if you will, or um, poop on top of the straw and it breaks down and it makes a nice compost that we can use on the garden. So every now and then we just throw a bale of hay just in their main pen and whatever's left over goes out there. That normally gets the lawn clippings. Hey greedy. So down the back here we've had a bit of a change. We've taken out the lemon tree. It was actually infected with borers. There's about four or five of them that are in the main trunk. So we decided to take it out. Um, there's a few options we could do here. We could put in a the mulberry and the fig tree. They're both deciduous, meaning the leaves will fall off in winter so the sun can make it through to the chook coop. Or we could put a couple of IBC beds in here or just another wicking bed up in the air at the moment as to what's gonna happen. Uh, my money's probably on the uh, dwarf mulberries to tell you the truth. And the chickens have been through my garden, but that's all right. We'll put a bit of soil everywhere. There's not a lot in there at the moment. Over the back here, they've gone right through the mustard. <laughs> uh, 
I've just seen this. This was where we had a mustard cover crop to try and fumigate out some nematodes. Um, basically it grew up to about 400 mil high and I just chopped it all down and dug it through. So the chooks have had a good field day on that. Do you want to grab a rake and just flatten that out for me sweetie? That looks awesome. It does look cool hey. <laughs> There's a culprit there. Um, the shade house. Well the insect netting house it's pretty much all been expanded. We'll go for a bit of a look. It's a bit of a rough job at the moment. I've still got just using pipe clips to hold the insect or the veggie net on here at the moment and a few more little pipe clips over here holding it on. There are holes in it. I mean there's a whopping great big hole in the door here where bits and pieces can come through and the ground or the base around the base of it isn't really secured. This section here won't be secured properly so I can lift this up and get large bits and pieces in there but the other pieces around the side around the rest of the perimeter will be um, secured down with some boards I think just to so no bugs and whatnot can climb in underneath. The main idea is to try and keep the fruit fly out at the moment. We just really want to try and grow a nice decent crop of tomatoes and capsicums this year so they always get hit by the fruit fly. This bed here, who are you nattering on about? <laughs> This bed here is going to have some bullshorn capsicum put in it. Um, you'll see that in another update, but this kale's still going strong. Up here, this is one of our failures. Yet again, Brussels sprouts. Just too warm here to grow Brussels sprouts for Bianca, but you know, no great loss. She's the only one that eats them. This garlic here, it started to shoot, and I did a bit of a clip last week on it, or the week before. What's happened is we had some warm temperatures during winter, and one of the things happened is that it's tricked the garlic into thinking that it's been through summer and when the temperatures drop back down to winter time temperatures it signaled them to sprout again so while the garlic up near the house is going fine just some of this stuff down here sprouted uh, it's no big loss we're still going to eat it so the strawberries are doing fine down in here we're still getting a fair few strawberries and these ones aren't eaten by rats thankfully over here these are the last of the broccoli that we're going to be keeping all the rest are coming out in here this one here and the others up there. I actually should have done this today but I didn't get around to it. I need to feed up this bed so I can plant some tomatoes out. Just putting through some horse manure, biochar and some worm castings and a nice thick layer of mulch. It's actually dried out a fair bit on top here because I've had no mulch. A bit of a lesson. Um, yeah, all the worms have receded from the top layer and they've gone down deep. I had a bit of a dig here earlier so the worms don't like the dry uh, soil up the top. Also too, as the soil dries out you're killing all your beneficial microbes so rather silly of me to let it get this far but you know, things happen. Down here, collies. These collies are booming. They're doing really really well. Very impressed with these collies. Um, just to show you one thing, a lot of people like to grab the leaves of their collies and put them up around the heads so their heads stay nice and white and this is a bit of an example why down here it's nice and pale up here it's starting to yellow a bit the sun hits them and they just change color uh, for me it's just aesthetic i don't really mind i'm still going to eat them they still taste great so i just thought i'd just show you that these collies hopefully will be out soon because i have a whole heap of tomato starts that need to go in here uh, along the back here I have four black Russians, there's three of the yellow, small yellow grape tomatoes from out the front and there's five of our KY1, they're all seeds we've saved. These guys are pretty much all going to go into here. Uh, the tomatoes up at the house, the ones that I got from Richard, I'm only going to plant probably two plants of each of those varieties just to see how they go and then I'll save seed from them and if I like them I'll um, grow them next year, we'll see. Just do a bit of a mix and match and see what goes best for us here. They're our bull's horn capsicums from our own saved seed. They'll pretty much all go in there, so you'll probably see that next update. Over here, the snake beans, the little volunteer ones are going fine. Um, the carrots, these are the mixed heirloom, they're doing all right. Lettuce is being harvested pretty much all continually. We're going from one plot to another, so we're back to these guys. Started to pick from him the other day. I suppose that's pretty much all it. A bit of a quick update. Um, I'll do a bit more of an in-depth one in different places later on if you're interested. But I'll just give you a bit of a, a look at the greenhouse. I'm rather impressed with the way it's set up. It's looking rather nice. There's a few little bits of the beds, like I said before, over here that need to be tidied up. But other than that, I think she's all going pretty sweet. So there you go, there's a bit of a look at just this main part of the garden down the back here. If there's anything that I've missed that you're curious about, just leave a comment or a question or a suggestion in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I'm going to try and feed up at least one of these beds today before dinner, so I better get cracking. Hope you have a great one and take it easy. Gotcha! 
thinking is being through uh look at this cheeky chickens this would be like a candy store for these girls anyway back to the garlic <laughs>